of the uh, ideas uh, that were published in the month of July. First off, read this disclaimer carefully. The purpose of this video and everything else that uh, is done in the name of Diamond Arm is to figure out how the market actually works. That is a challenging thing for sure, but when you figure that out, uh, then a lot of other things uh, come uh, easier. Okay, so the first one on the list here is uh, from the 31st of July, and this was the S&P 500 thesis. Let's go here to the laboratory and get my notes. 31st of July. Next week is critical for stocks. 100 weekly moving average breakout or fake out. The strongest score we got was from relative performance, a fear in favor of the bulls. So let's find the 31st of July. Where is it? It is... Okay. So this was uh, the date I, I had when I made the video. So here is the 25th of July. And here is the beginning of next week. So we did get a breakout. Uh, we got a 5% gain. But uh, it was all given back. So we did lose it. Uh, the key event here uh, definitively is that while we did get a breakout, we had a rejection at this green 50 week moving average, which uh, it's been a big deal for some time. Um, that is the primary explana explanation, basically. Let's we are go on to the daily data points. Let's find the 31st here of July. So here is the 29th. Uh, so here is the next week. In this case, you had a breakout above uh, this uh, blue 100 day moving average, uh, which did result in a decent uh, rally. But there's always a but. We had just perfect surgical rejection from the red 200 day moving average. Just a very good place to put on short positions. Maybe buy a put. Um, or to tighten your stops. I mean, there's a lot of ways you can react to, the, to these kinds of interactions. But clearly, this was a rejection. So in this case, uh, did this bullish thesis work out? Yes or no? Well, it did work out. Was it like a long-term trade? Definitely not, but you know, a gain is, uh, is a gain. And we know exactly why it failed, quote unquote, later on. Yeah, it is what it is. Um, so I also did a review here on the 9th of um, October. Yeah, so I'm going to just keep that in my notes. Next uh, from July is South Korea. Yeah, on the 3rd of uh, July. So let's find the 3rd of July here. Could this be the low? Uh, 3.5 in favor of the bulls. We were at RSI support. The strongest uh, numbers were from relative performance, 6. And also, you know, 5 here on the technicals to the bulls. So we had RSI support on the weeklies on the 3rd of July. So let's find the 3rd here of July. So here is the so uh, here is the following week, uh, which started the fourth of fourth of July. So let's zoom out a bit there. Uh, so this is the let's go a bit like there. It's there. So it was this low end of RSI, and we did in this case see um, a rally uh, the the following week after I published the video. Then we do, did have a bit of a pullback, but you can see here that we actually closed higher than the low of the previous week, and then we did get a temporary rally that la that lasted, you know, f four weeks. Uh, that it was all given back, but uh, this effect of getting a bounce uh, on that RSI level it did work out. Here uh, we have the daily uh, data points. Let's find here the third of July. So. Here is the first, the, the next day is on the 5th. Let's measure. Here is the first, uh, the last data. We do go back. Uh, the maximum pullback here approaching 4%. Uh, you had a gain here of 2%, uh, max gain of approaching 9%. Uh, the closing uh, loss here, max loss, was um, around 2%. 
So all in all, um, you did get a bullish trade here, um, but there was some give back uh, initially and all has been given back later on. So it just goes to show you that you always need to have stops and protect any kind of gain uh, you get. Was this the low for South Korea? No, we did certainly go lower. Uh, it is, however, interesting to see that during this downtrend, this RSI level did function as a bounce level. But it still is to be determined when the capitalized bounce will come. Next on the list from the 17th of July is Philippines. Uh, here is the 17th of July. So, massive bull time cycle. A 0 0.3 though, a very modest, mediocre win for the bulls, RSI and PPO support, and I write that the time cycles were bullish. A big uh, score here, 6 for the technicals. So let's here find the 17th of uh, July. Okay, so this here is, this is the last candlestick when I did uh, the analysis. And after that, we had one, two, three, four, five weeks of a rally. Uh, we failed miserably at the purple 20 week moving average, but there was a meaningful gain. Yeah, let's go here to the daily, da daily data points to do an accurate measurement. Uh, so the last data point I got on the dailies was from the 15th and that is here. And yeah, it was just a ni nice rally after the video, uh, approaching, yeah, 12.5%, which is a good gain. But as you can see, uh, we had a very clear rejection level. That blue 100 day moving average was adamant. Uh, we tested it two times uh, solidly. Uh, and also, you know, you could count four if you want to. But yeah, it's a resistance level, and if you meet resistance and you, you try and try and you're not able to break through, then the bears will take notice, they will build short positions, and those are the bulls, you know, they will start to get spooked, you know. You have a gain, you know, you have had a rally, you recently saw us go back on the chart and you see that there's been a big sell-off, so you're like, well, I'm going to take my gains. And then you have bears who are bearish, and also bulls that flip to bears, so yeah. But yeah, this uh, this worked, you know, you got a rally, but that major time cycle low uh, has not manifested itself yet. Was this a win or a loser? It was a winner. So let's mark that one as well, like that. Then again, it's one of those shorter term wins, but a win is a win. And you must allow the market to determine whether you have a short, medium, or long-term position. There's no point in you having a long-term time horizon if the market has decided that it wants to like break through your support levels. Um, then it became a short-term thing all of a sudden. So yeah, you just have to just... And the great thing, of course, if you have that kind of strict method is that there's will, there will be a time when you buy a low Maybe it's a bounce, but then later on you found that, wow, that actually was the low. But at the time, you don't know whether you have a bounce or the low. And it's much better to get a 12% gain from a bounce than losing those 12% because you're going to just assume that you got the low. Those were all of these stocks. Yeah, stock market ETFs. Uh, next on the list is in the bond market, the AGG. This was from the 24th of July, here it is. Uh, here another modest 0 0.3 for the bulls. Uh, we had the 20 weekly moving average resistance. So the big score we got here on the technicals was bearish, somewhat bearish seasonality, bullish relative performance and fundamentals. So this was messy. So let's find the 24th of July. So the last data I got here was from the 18th of July, you know, the weekly data points. We did actually have a breakout the following week, but it was a clear case of a fake breakout because then we pull back, we try again very pathetically. Then that week we did see the bulls really, really try though. It's so like one, two, three, well, well one, like well, three weeks, the bulls, well, four weeks, the bulls were above well, they were goofing out above that resistance level, but 
especially this week here uh, mid um, August, it was very clear that the bulls were not able to really commit above that resistance level. And after that, like boom, 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 boom. Just uh, complete, uh, just falling to pieces here. Yeah. Um, let's measure. Uh, so let's find my handy measurement uh, tool. 24th of July. So where is it? It is. So the last data point I had was from the 25th. We go down a bit, then we rally, get 1%, not exactly uh, something to celebrate too loudly. And you can see here with the, this blue 100 day moving average how ferocious the battle was. I mean, you had this absolutely epic battle uh, around the 100 daily moving average in blue. Um, then uh, that, you know, day came where you had just a very surgical rejection. Boom, and after that, it's just way down. This massive sell-off in the bond market is something that, you know, people would say like, oh, why would you ever turn bullish on bonds when the interest rates are going up? The thing is that this is not at all what the big fish in the market wants to, ha to happen. The bond market is a very, very, very big deal. Uh, so the current situation is not something that is like, oh, it's easy, you know, you can just uh, bet on higher interest rates and just print money. Like, if you zoom out a bit here, okay, this is not supposed to happen. The last time we had this kind of extreme move was during the global financial crisis, as you can see, which also was a situation where when we look back at the, ch at the chart, it's very easy to see where the low was. But as it happened, it was extremely difficult. Uh, throughout that sell-off, a lot of people uh, were um, trying to put on bullish positions that didn't work out simultaneously. When the, the low came, and the low eventually came, you had a lot of people who were massively short the bonds when the rally began. They thought it was like a bounce and entered massive short positions after this rally, which you know, didn't work out. So, yeah. Um, yeah, this is just a very, very um, dire situation. The bond market is a huge deal, very huge deal. Uh, so in this case, uh, the 20 weekly moving average, it did sh you sh show us that uh, it's a big deal. Uh, and uh, uh, the bear came back with a vengeance. So it, this one is messy. It's not really a winner or a loser. It's, it confirms that the 20 week is a huge deal. And that is good. It means that we're going forward, we know that. And next on the list is from the 10th of July. Uh, this was copper. So let's go to the lab. So here is copper. Uh, major support levels, 3.8 for the bulls, horizontal support and a double bottom. Highest score was from relative performance with a 5 to the bulls. Let's find the 10th of July. It Okay, so let's zoom out a bit here. So the 4th, here's the 11th. So, okay, I think we have to zoom in a bit. So here, here we zoom in. This is the last candlestick when I made the analysis and we did find some kind of support at the 200 week moving average. The following week though, we went we were up here, but then we closed lower, then we recovered, turned the 200 week in red to support, then it became resistance, now we are above it again. Uh, so there's chaos, uh, definitively chaos, the double bottom didn't play itself out. So now we have a 200 week moving average trade instead. Let's um, do some uh, measurements here. Let's find the, the 10th of July, the 7th, the 8th, the 11th. So. The last data point here was from the 8th. Then we go down a maximum uh, 11%. Yeah, that will close out uh, most uh, stops for sure. Uh, then we did go higher, um, find some low, but that was a different trade altogether. That was the 200 week uh, moving average trade. And it's important to treat these things as separate trades. So when you put on like a double bottom trade, you put the stop somewhere below it, reasonably below it. And if you get stopped out, you just wait for another opportunity. The other opportunity here was the 200 week moving average here in red, as a, using it as a support level. And if you did that as an example here, 
uh, you could get a maximum like 12% gain. Uh, there's a major war now around that moving average, so it's it's messy. It's not a clean level now. It's more of like a battle zone for the bulls and the bears. So, yeah. But yeah, did the horizontal support and double bottom work? No, I do think that they are at the horizontal support level. It is still relevant. It's it's part of um, investing thesis out there. Uh, the reason why we do see some bullish action recently but but the situation now with copper is clearly just messy and next on the list here is at the end these were all under hot beat next we go to money um yeah and we stick to those um theses that were published in july here is the first on the list on the 17th of july euro slash the us to dollar here is uh, that thesis, dollar strength becoming a liability, and definitively it is becoming your liability. Um, so we had a 3.0 for the bulls, uh, we were definitively oversold. None of the scores were, re were really high though. So let's find the 17th of July. So here is the 11th of July, here is the 18th of July, which is the week following the video. We did see, yeah, four weeks of us going up, uh, then it all was given away, but we did get a rally. Let's measure on the daily data points to get that accurate measurement. So let's find 17th of July, 14th, 15th, so... The last data point I had on the dailies were the 15th, was the 15th, and we got a maximum 2.7% gain. Uh, it was all given given away, but in the forex market, due to the leverage, you can get uh, you can get a very 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 substantial gain from that apparently small percentage. The number one resistance level is still the green 50 day moving average. It's a short, 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 short level, easy for the bears to use, and they come back there to almost print money. Uh, these levels will work until they don't. When you have a level that's worked for such a long time, the risk of using it does, however, go up. Um, these are the situations where you will eventually see a short quiz. Um, because you get pigs, you know, you got pe get people who think that it becomes too easy and then they will start building bigger and bigger positions. And yeah, that doesn't end well. It That's not such a huge phenomenon, though, in the Forex market, especially these highly liquid pairs. But it still is a phenomenon in Forex. Um, the same psychological effects, uh, they manifest uh, themselves. Now, let's look a bit here at the RSI levels. Uh, the thesis on the 7th is that we were very oversold yeah we were oversold and uh, you can see that uh, let's zoom in a bit so this became the bounce level as you see as you see and we revisited the same bounce level here and one two three yeah we have like four weeks of a rally now from the same rsi level so it still works so yeah, I will call this a winner. It was not a big gain, unless you used uh, the leverage opportunities in Forex. Um, of course, leverage is a double-edged sword. You need to understand the full gravitational force of your position. Uh, so yeah. And next on the list, yeah, nothing here. Uh, we stick to July. Yeah, so I, I only had one video for July, just uh, have a bit of a look, July, July, at one video that is in Forex. Yeah, okay, next is in the crypto space, uh, on the 24th of July, Bitcoin slash the US dollar. Here it is, a bullish surge if this happens. Minus 2.3 to the bears, when, so we had 200 weekly moving average resistance and 50 daily moving average resistance. Minus 6 here to the bears. Let's look at uh, Bitcoin. So we 
are going all the way back here to 24th of July. Zoom in a bit. Uh, so here is the 11th of July, 18th of July. So this was the last candlestick when I made the video. We were still below the 200 week moving average. One, two, three weeks celebrating above it. Then mid August, everything and more was given away. And now we are back. We are we started. So yes, the two, the two hundred week, uh, it it became resistance. It just uh, did. The fifty daily moving average resistance is also a bit of a big, uh, big uh, deal. So let's measure a bit here with uh, the handy tool. Yeah, the twenty fourth of uh, July. So here is the twenty. Yeah, so here is the twenty third of July. We did actually close above it, but when I made the video, uh, we were below it. Um, so we peaked a bit above, then we lost it, uh, going down maximum 8%. Then we did have a, max, a maximum, yeah, 12-ish percent rally. Um, later on, yeah, we see that the green 50 day has come back with a bit of a vengeance here relatively easy for the bears to just short it um, now as well. So um, the 200 weekly moving average resistance and 50 daily moving average resistance, they are obviously a very big deal. Uh, so sort of like using them to trade Bitcoin still definitively makes a, make a lot of sense. Whether you want to be bullish or bearish is very contingent on what happens with those moving averages. Is it support or resistance? Yeah. It still is the case, it just is. Next on the list is from the 10th of July and that is Avalanche slash the US dollar. 10th of July is uh, here. 50 daily moving average resistance, but there was a but. 1.3 to the bulls, we were at resistance. But we did have a good score. Well, the best number was from relative performance with a four to the bulls. We had a double bottom and a rounding bottom. Let's find the 10th of July. Um, so here, so here is the last week we were at resistance, but we got a big rally. So let's go here to the daily data points. Let's find the 10th of July. Let's get my handy measurement tool. Um, so let's look a bit here. So you had the 10th of July, 50 daily moving average resistance. So here is the 8th of July. Uh, we were up there and got rejected. So here is the 10th. Uh, then we did go further down. So we did lose. Uh, yeah, approaching 15%, so as a short, it would have worked out. From that low, it did, however, rally 55%. Yeah, we can see here that uh, the green 50 day became uh, a very clear and obvious support level, uh, worked out pretty well for the bulls and offered multiple opportunities to buy Avalanche and make you know, decent gains. Uh, here it became resistance again, you know, and um, from, since that it's been a good short. Uh, we did see that on the weeklies uh, some more significant gains uh, manifested themselves. However, on the dailies, the 50 daily moving average resistance created a pretty decent short selling opportunity momentarily. So it goes to show you that, you know, the the indicators, they definitively can play themselves out. Uh, all of them can play themselves out. So in this case, the 50 daily moving average uh, really rejected. But uh, the bottoming formation led to multiple weeks of, uh, of gains. So, But this is the thing about the crypto market especially. There is so much volatility there that it can be difficult to operate with those classical uh, percentage stop levels. Uh, so, what, so what some people do instead uh, is to just have smaller positions and have wider uh, stops, you know, to counteract uh, the chop. Next, we will go 
to those items in the sectors uh, sheet. Uh, so the first on the list is GDX on the 31st of July. Going into the laboratory, breakout with gold at key support. So you had a 20 daily moving average breakout. We were oversold. Highest score we got here was on the fundamentals with a 4. Let's find the 31st of uh, July. It is. So here is the last candlestick I had when I did the analysis, the 25th of July. Two weeks of rally, everything given back and then some. Let's go to the daily data points, get that accurate measurement. So let's find the 31st of July. Um, so here's the 25th, 26th, 27th. 28th, 29th, okay, so the last candlestick we got here was on the 29th. Um, now, we did have, have a maximum 2.34% gain, maximum okay, minus 3.7% uh, loss, uh, maximum 3%-ish uh, closing loss, max gain 4.7, well, 4.8%. So the key thing here is that we were able to break out above the 20 daily moving average, then became resistance, then become support, then we did get, after that confirmed support here, we got a, you know, okay rally, but later on, uh, the 20 daily moving average came back to the bears, you know, they are in control, they, um, yeah, they did what they used to do before. They just they just short the twenty day, and here we had a little bit of a peak above. Then we got fifty daily moving average in green resistance. Then the twenty day is resistance. Confirmed breakout, rally, given back, and on Friday you can see that we tested um, this green fifty daily moving average here. So it is interesting that we now have very aggressively tested the 20 daily moving average at one and two and then a solid breakout and test of the other re resistance level. Uh, the green 50 day is, um, I mean, it's right here uh, now. And uh, if we were to close out above that resistance level, uh, I, that would definitely be um, spooky for the bears. Uh, and then, okay, so yeah, so we did get a breakout but it was such a short-term trade that this isn't really... Well, it certainly is not a big winner uh, by any stretch of the imagination. Um, but currently, you know, right here and, and right now, there's something very interesting about the 50 daily moving average. So there, there's that. Then we have a SIL on the 3rd of July. This is the Silver Miners ETF. In the notes, I have written Best seasonality of the year, 2.8 to the bulls, and we were at RSI and PPO support uh, for on the seasonality. So the seasonality was good, but the four means that it wasn't like extremely good, but relatively speaking, good. Let's find the 3rd of July. So here is, this is the 4th of July. This is the next week. We do go down a bit, but then we do get a bit of a rally. Let's look here uh, at the RSI. Here is the RSI, we were oversold, we stayed a bit oversold, but we did get a rally from that level. Uh, let's look here on the daily data points. So here is, yeah, this is September. September. Um, so here in during July here, we did goof around a bit at that RSI level. Uh, got that rally, and you see here that uh, late, uh, uh, let's zoom in a bit, so late, um, what is it, early September we tested, you know, this RSI level again, and then we did get a pretty solid rally, so how big was that rally, so if you just bought the RSI, you could have gotten 16%, which is pretty good, Yeah, let's let's measure from the third of uh, July. 
let's find the 3rd of July. So it is um, uh, 5th 1st. So yeah, the, the next trading day here was, yeah, so it did go straight down. Massive, yeah, just a massive uh, deterioration. So yeah, um, we did see that on the weeklies, uh, that support came in, we got a bit of a bounce. But the volatili volatility on the dailies was just very, very high, and that is the classical thing with these precious metal miners. Volatility is very high, so it's one of those situations where it is easier to have smaller positions and maybe have wider stops. Uh, because it, the moves are ridiculous, and you also have, you know, the leveraged ETFs, uh, they are also, you know, very exciting. And uh, places where you, on just a simple short-term trade, can get, you know, pretty big moves uh, percentage-wise. So, yeah. Next on the list is... Um, it is not in that sector, but it is in... Uh, yeah. There might, yeah. In the utilities, XLU on the 10th of July. Uh, laboratory. So, um, 200 daily moving average uh, support and pairs trading. 3.5 in favor of the bulls, 200 daily moving average support was the key signal. Strongest number was on the seasonality with a 5 to the bulls. So let's find the, the 10th here of July. Uh, so here is... Here is the candlestick when I did the analysis. Uh, we did sort of test this green 50 week moving average a couple of weeks. Then we did get a strong uh, rally. Let's go here to the daily data points. Zoom out a bit, get that moving average calculated. Like that. And this was on the 10th of July, so 7, 8, yeah. So this was the last candlestick from the 8th of July. Uh, we go up here, test a bit, uh, but you, you can see that it, it, there was some noise because um, it then became a resistance here. Uh, the bulls got back into action once it became, well, uh, we had that breakout. And that is when the bulls really had a big uh, rally. Then as we broke down below the 200 daily moving average uh, and it became uh, uh, pretty clear resistance, that is when the bears really got back into action. So is the 200 daily moving average important for this ETF? Yes. But in this situation, we did have a battle around that moving average. Yeah. So yeah, that was uh, the utility ETF. 200 daily moving average is obviously a huge, huge deal for the XLU, but it is important for both players, the bulls and the bears. So just because you have support does not mean that the bears are not going to do everything in their power to turn it into resistance. So yeah, it certainly became a winner, but um, yeah. There was uh, quite this battle, and now the bears have won the 200 daily moving average battle, so there's that. Next on the list is the 5G ETF on the, on the 24th of July. It is here. 100 moving average is king minus 1, uh, 100 daily moving average resistance, uh, minus 5 here on the technicals. Let's go to the 24th of July. So the 4th, 11th, 18th. So here is the last candlestick when I did the analysis. We did get a, a rally, up, uh, but it got rejected at the blue 100 week moving average. Going to the daily data points, like that. So let's have a bit of a look. So I published the video on the 24th of July. So 22nd, 25th. 
So this was the last daily candlestick. We then go down. Um, but then we do get a pretty significant rally, 7%. And in this case, yeah, uh, here on the 28th, we had a clean close above the blue 100 day moving average, which was, you know, the key resistance le um, level. On the following day, on the 29th, you can see that we tested it intraday and had a good support, so confirmation. Uh, that resulted in a good rally. Uh, during this pullback, you see that uh, the bulls try to use it again. But in this case, you get this very bearish dynamic where you have a long-term support, but a short-term resistance level in the form of uh, the 20-day moving average and also the 10-day here, uh, um, which is not good at all. Um, uh, when you know a short-term moving average exhibits more power than a long-term, then whoever owns that short-term, um, they are definitively showing strength. As it were, they are punching above uh, their weight, and yeah, we are way below the one below the one hundred day moving average. Um, so in this case, we did see it, um, a breakout above the one hundred daily moving average eventually. Uh, which was good, but um, um, the 100 day uh, proved to be very much a king maker or breaker, and uh, sitting on the throne now is uh, a bear. So yeah. So I will call this one a, a loser, and in terms of the thesis, but it it certainly is not a loser in the sense that the 100 daily moving average was a spurious indicator. No, it was very uh, much a good indicator, but uh, it's not in the bulls uh, camp uh, now. Next on the list is, um, yeah, this is too recent. August is way too recent, yes. And those were all in these sectors. Now we will go into the thematic sheet. The first uh, on the list is in the cordless electricity uh, theme. That is Sociedad Quimica e Minera de Chile. Uh, on the 3rd of July, let's go to the laboratory. So here is the 3rd of July. Monster yield and technical analysis support. 5.5 to the bulls, 100 daily moving average support good seasonality and fundamentals. Let's find the 3rd of July. So this here, so this is the last candlestick I had. Um, the 20 week moving average, it's sort of continued to work, but there's not like a clean relationship between price and that moving average. So let's get the daily data points. So let's find the 3rd of July. So here is, uh, yeah. So here is the 1st first, first of July. Here is the next trading day after I made uh, the video. Uh, okay, well, well, we need to take the close like that. Uh, we do go down a bit, maximum down, actually approaching 5%, uh, maximum gain. 5.6, then it's all given back, maximum loss yeah, approaching 7%, maximum gain yeah, 34. So the 100 daily moving average here in blue, yeah, it continued to be a big deal, but it did turn temporarily into resistance. When we got above it, we then got a very substantial rally. Here again, we tested it, got another rally, but now recently it's become a very clean uh, resistance, well, clean-ish uh, resistance uh, level. So it continues to matter a lot. So yeah, the 100 daily moving, moving average, it certainly works for um, this stock, but it works for both the bulls and uh, the bears. But I will call this more of a winner than a loser. But recently, it certainly we have a set situation where the bears are in control of that super important moving average. Next on the list is Canadian Solar on the 10th of July. 
So here it is, bulls are ready for a liftoff. A minus 1.5 to the bears, um, 50 weekly moving average resistance. Yeah, so some pretty bearish data here, except that the fundamentals were pretty good. Well, let's find the 10th of July. So here is, um, so right here is the 4th of July, which was the last weekly candlestick I had. The next week we did see that um, yeah, there was uh, an attempted test, but then it failed and we went back to test the red 200 week moving average, which continued to be a very good support level. And those who bought the 200 week moving average would have gained a max 67% uh, gain, which is pretty decent. We are actually still testing that super important moving average. So there could be some um, opportunity. What I really kind of don't like is that the lower wicks of these two candlesticks, uh, you see that the last candlestick has a even, even lower wick than the preceding candlestick. Uh, showing us that there are bears exploring uh, territories beyond below uh, that support. And it did happen back here as well, but in this case, it's different because the preceding candlestick here is way more bullish than this preceding candlestick. So hmm, dangerous stuff. Let's find the 10th of July. So this is the, here is the eighth. So this was the last candlestick. Then we do go down a maximum 18%, which is a pretty good short. But when things looked uh, very bad, that is when the low was formed and you did get a very substantial rally. So were the bulls ready for liftoff? Well, they were certainly getting ready. They weren't fully ready yet but they did have their liftoff. But before that, this 50 weekly moving average played itself out and we did get a good short here on Canadian solar. So let's color this one in like uh, that. Let's go further down on the list. Next theme is alternative energy. Here we have Enviva on the 17th of July. In my notes, I wrote a stock benefiting big from, well, no, 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 here. 100 weekly moving average support and monster dividend. That sounds like a pretty good yield. 5.5 to the bulls, 100 weekly moving average support. The biggest score was on the fundamentals. Seven, seven to the bulls. Let's find the 17th of July. Um, so here is the 11th of July, the last weekly candlestick. Uh, we tested that blue 100 weekly moving average and off to the races, we went big, 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 big rally. But there is a but because you need to, to use stops, lock in gains because it was all given back and then some. Now we have tested the red 200 week moving average instead and got a bit of a bounce. Now let's go to the dailies to do that accurate measurement. Let's find here the first day post analysis. So we are at, uh, so 15, so uh, the last trading day was the 15th of uh, July and off to the races we went, maximum 30% gain. That's a fantastic uh, gain. We got above the red 200 daily moving average, things were looking pretty good, but it became a resistance level and the bears shorted and profited big time. But did the 100 weekly moving average work as support or not? It definitively did. But always protect the, the gains you get because they were all given back every single cent if you didn't, did not have a stop in place. 
Next on the list is in the e-commerce broad theme, Global e-online. On the 24th of July, in my notes, I wrote Epic Moving Average Battle. 1.8 to the Bulls 100 Daily Moving Average Resistance versus 20 Daily Moving Average Support. Let's find the 24th of July, 18th. So this was the last candlestick on the weekly uh, post. Well, before I... When I, I made the video. And we did actually get a bit of a rally here. So let's go to the dailies. Let's find the 24th of July. Let's get the measurement tool. 19th, 20th, 21st, 22nd. So we then go down here to test uh, the green 50 daily moving average. We then break out above the blue 100 daily moving average and go up uh, big. So yeah, definitively uh, you had a situation where you had 100 daily moving average resistance versus uh, 20 daily moving average uh, support, but you also had the green 50 daily moving average support. Uh, specifically, in this case, the 100 daily moving average sort of won because the 20 daily moving average support failed, but the 50 daily moving average came back to help later on, so it was certainly uh, a broadened epic moving average battle. But in this case, this was at least temporarily it became a loser because the 20 day just uh, was lost so uh, swiftly. But the 50 day opened up another opportunity. But that would be a separate trade. Next on the list is Duolingo. This is in the Education 2.0 theme. On the 31st of July, it is up here. Huge upside if this is the low. 2.8 to the bulls, a 20 weekly moving average uh, support. The biggest score was on relative performance with a 5 to the bulls. Let's find the, the 31st of July. So the 25th of July was the, the last candlestick when I did the analysis. And that purple uh, 20 week moving average is <laughs> very much so a big deal for Duolingo. Um, yeah, it's, it is very, very trade, tradable, but yeah, this stock certainly likes to test it. The problem though for the bulls is that the green 50 week moving average flipped into a very solid resistance level. And um, yeah, especially here early October, we just had this extremely vicious candlestick that is very, very much engulfing and very bearishly so. Let's find the 31st of July here, like that. Uh, the stock is very, very erratic, as you can see. So the first trading day after the analysis was... So the last, the closing day here was the 29th of July. That was the last day. Uh, you did get a 19% rally. Give it all back. Then you have 14%. Give it all back and 4% uh, loss. Then you have 15%. And then you, ha you have... 15% uh, in the red. So, um, yes, uh, Duolingo, it's uh, a mess. Um, the 20 weekly moving average definitively was a very important support level. Uh, but it was, as I showed you with the, the measurement tool on the daily data points, gain, loss, gain, loss, gain, loss. And do the double digit gains. Uh, so Duolingo certainly is a stock where when you have gains, so you want to close those, uh, at least tighten your stops as you get those gains because uh, Duolingo uh, giveth and taketh away. Next on the list is in the Precision Oncology theme. 
and this is actually a leftover uh, from June that I should have analyzed then but fell through the cracks. Uh, so let's find the 11th of June. Here is a very stem precision oncology stock. 4.0 to the bulls, uh, horizontal support, uh, strong fundamentals and technicals. So let's find the 11th of June. So here is the 6th of June. This is the, here is the last candlestick before I published the video. Here is the following week. Uh, we go sideways. But then when we lose horizontal support, we go down big. So a horizontal support was definitively a very, very, very important support. But losing very, very important support means that you will fall down a lot. Uh, so let's go to the daily data points and measure a bit. So the 11th of June, let's find the 11th of June. So here is the 10th. Here is the 10th, yeah. So yeah, right after I published uh, the video, it went down 15%. Rally, down again, rally. So uh, the horizontal support is not as like clear of an indicator as like say some some moving average. Let's move the quick assist. Um. So let's just. Yeah, but yeah, this definitively became a huge win eventually for the bears. So I will I will call this one a loser because. Uh, yeah, horizontal support broke. Uh, it was key support for sure, and we saw what happened when key support is lost. Okay, so let's continue down the list. Uh, next is from the discounts and bargains uh, theme, and that is Target. On the 17th of July, let's go to the laboratory. 17th of July. A, st a stock benefiting big from inflation question mark 4.3 in favor of uh, the bulls 200 weekly moving average resistance versus 100 no versus rsi support on the weeklies the biggest number was six on the seasonality to the bulls let's find the 17th of july so um yeah, so we were below the red 200 week moving average. Uh, the next uh, week we went above it, uh, got a pretty good rally. Then we fell, fell below the 200 week again, uh, stayed below, uh, but this week we are peaking above it. So the 200 week for target is a big deal. Let's measure from the 17th of uh, July. So here is 15. 18th, uh, 18th, this is the last day, and if we did go up here, yeah, a max 25%, that's a pretty decent uh, gain. Uh, the problem here for, for the bulls is this blue 100 day moving average, which uh, continued to be a big problem, uh, a very good level for the bears, and also for the bulls to put, well, to tighten stops. But uh, on Friday this week, we did close you know, somewhat strongly above the blue 100 day moving average, but the, the green 50 day is right above us. And on the 18th of October, it was a very clean uh, resistance level. So the 50 day is the next, uh, next one to battle. Uh, so in this case, we did have the RSI support, and it did play itself out. So the bullish thesis played itself out temporarily. Uh, this is also one of those uh, cases where you could have a big, uh, well, a, well, well, yeah, a big gain if you tightened uh, stops. If you didn't tighten stops, then the big gain could become a big loser. That is a frustrating uh, aspect of the financial markets, but it it is what it is. There's no, I there's no re reason to try to like fight the market unless you have a very very big uh, big uh, trading account.
Next on the list is Boy de Gaming on the 31st of July. Let's go to the laboratory. 100 moving average resistance, minus 1 to the bears, 100 weekly moving average resistance. Biggest bear was on this seasonality, minus 5. Let's find the 31st of July. So here, yeah, so here is the 25th, the last candlestick uh, when I did the analysis. The next week we did also see some rejection there, peaked above uh, early August. Then, you know, as I think you can clearly see, the 100 week is a very stubborn level and uh, the bulls, they were not able to stay above. They peaked above a little bit, but that doesn't cut it. So, now let's find the last uh, candlestick on the dailies. That was on the 29th. Yeah, we did get a minus... 3-ish percent pullback initially, uh, then we did get yeah 5.6 percent gain uh, peaking above the blue 100 day moving average, but then we did see you know very substantial correction and the 100 day moving average now as you can see in the latest candlesticks it's a very clean uh, resistance level uh, pretty easy for the bears. What is a bit of an issue for the bears here is that you see that. Uh, on the 18th here, clear um, rejection, but uh, the following days, the bulls try to uh, break out above it. So the bulls are, they are attempting something here. But yeah, uh, the 100 point, I guess, moving average is definitely a very, very much a big uh, deal for Boyd Gaming. Next, uh, yeah, I think that these were all of the items. Yes, they were. So, we have now gone through all of the videos that were published in July. There were some good winners, uh, there were some losers. Um, the key thing with both the winners and the losers is that the key signals for the trades are important. That's the, the critical thing is to find signals that are tradable. It is very important though to be aware that both the bulls and the bears are trading these signals. So if we find a very good support level, I guarantee you the bears they want to smash that support level because they know if they can break a very important support levels then the bulls will panic, a lot of selling will come into the market, and that will be a very good shorting opportunity. So to understand that dynamic is very critical. That is also why you should have stops uh, in place, uh, because if a resistance is broken through, uh, then the rally can become very ferocious. And if you are then short at, uh, at that resistance level, and you don't have any like stop somewhere above that resistance level, then you all of, all of a sudden could be in the middle of a short squeeze. So yeah, uh, as far as the method goes, uh, it's uh, under continuous development. Uh, the current market condition is, is tricky because um, you have you know the technical seasonality, fundamentals, relative performance, but now in addition to that, you have uh, a dual political situation that is very uh, unpredictable. Uh, huge uh, news events can just neutralize any kind of like technical analysis you do uh, because it simply is more important so in those market conditions it's more difficult to navigate and even more important to have a broad you know diversified portfolio so whatever you do of course you definitively in these market conditions want to be market neutral and go to diamondarm.com to get more intel.